Last week, there was two sermons that was preached. We're doing, you asked for it. Will you say that with me? You asked for it. You asked for it from Easter. You wrote in asking for different series, different sermons, different subjects. And last week, there was one preached here on warfare, standing firm. And then at the other campus, Post Falls campus, it was all about translations, biblical translations. Well, I had the privilege to hear both. I heard one Saturday night, and then I heard the other one on Sunday. I got news for you. They were famous. And if you have any thoughts on, if you're in a war, in a storm, and you need to know, be kind of reminded about warfare, how to stand, what warfare is all about, having your word, the sword, please listen to that. The other one is on translation. If you've been wondering why, why in the world is there so many translations and so much of been, you know, word for word and some thought of thought, and it was amazing. Uh, you know, our language changes throughout the centuries. Uh, I don't say, you know, thou shalt go there yonder. I don't talk like that. I'm like, hey, yo. Get in your car, Logan. Let's go, bro. You know? And so it's just real. I'm from the South, and I don't speak King James. And so translations change in order for people to understand them. And it's still beautiful word by word or thought by thought translation. And it, it was just wonderful. Now I'm going to start preaching. So none of that was on my preaching time, Nathan. Thank you. Tonight, you asked for it. One thing that you asked for was in the area of evangelism. And so I'm excited about teaching on evangelism. I call this Lostology. Uh, some of you have been through Lostology class. I've been teaching it for probably 25 years. Uh, now Logan, he carries that torch, preaching Lostology. I'm going to share on Lostology tonight, but it has definitely, if you've been through the class, this is going to be a, definitely a little different tonight. Not totally, but somewhat different. Got a little twist on it. But uh, I, I want to talk to you about evangelism. I need you to do this right now because... You ask for evangelism and three things must take place or nothing's going to take place. Okay. I can preach till in the morning till you fall out of the loft because you get sleepy. Yeah. Because if, if these three things don't take place, nothing's going to change. First of all, your heart's got to change. You got to ask God, I need your heart for the lost. If you don't get the heart, it doesn't matter how much instruction I give you. That's all there is to it. you got to have a burning passion for the lost. And the Holy Spirit's able to do that. Number two, I'm going to give you instructions. I want to equip you for the work of the ministry in order for you to, to, to learn about evangelism. You must receive it. So would you tell your neighbor right there, receive it? So, so you, you get the heart. You get some instruction, you get teaching and learning tonight, hopefully. And then the last one is this. If you don't, if you get the other two and you don't do this one, it still doesn't matter. You ready for this one? Obey. That's right. Obey Jesus. <laughs> it's amazing. People can give you a good hallelujah, praise God with evangelism. They can know all the evangelism scriptures and all that. You can even have a heart, but sometimes people won't step out of the boat in the area of obedience. And so those three things. So I want to pray for us tonight for those three right now. If you'll put your hand on your heart, because I, I really believe it, it's got to take place or I could be wasting my breath tonight. So, Father, I just I do pray that right now for the heart of the Father to be deposited in each one of us. The transformation would take place. God, we, we just receive your word tonight. Faith comes from hearing. Father, pour in your word tonight. And we want to be ones that's going to be obedient to your word, Father. Not just sacrifice, but obedient in Jesus' name. And everyone said,
Say this word with me, golden thread. You're going to find a golden thread throughout Heart of the City Church in everything that we do. That golden thread is reaching the lost. No matter what we do, no matter what day it is, no matter what outreach we're doing, no matter what small group you're in, we're all about a golden thread. I think you're going to see it on my PowerPoint. You'll see a golden thread. There's a, I asked for a golden thread. Why? Because I want you to know that throughout Heart of the City Church, there's a golden thread through everything that we do. See my little golden thread right there? That golden thread is evangelism, reaching the lost. That's why we preach the gospel every gathering, because we know that God is drawing people. Our motto here is to be a people after God's own heart. How many of you know that? To be a people, that's our passion. And, 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 and I want to use that tonight in the, very, in the very beginning when it comes to the golden thread because everything, even knowing uh, to be a people after God's own heart, I tell you what, it comes with evangelism if you're going to be that. The four areas, know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Here's the golden thread. First of all, know God. Say that with me, know God. If you know God, if we know God, we will love God. If we love God, guess what? We will obey God. We're going to follow his commandments. Amen. We're going to do what God tells us to do. And I'm going to tell you from the get-go what Jesus tells all of us to do. You ready for it? Two words. You ready? You ready? Say this with me. Go fish. Go fish. Tell your neighbor right there. Go fish. Go fish. Anybody ever played go fish before? You ever played go fish? You know exactly. Go fish. God calls every believer to go fish. Why? Because here's the commandments of the New Testament. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Amen. And to love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater way of loving your neighbor than sharing the greatest news on the face of the earth that can save their life. That's pure love right there. Listen to what John 14, 21 says. He who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. I will love him and manifest myself to him. Come on, God, what, there is commandments in the New Testament. There's this thing called the Great Commission. Say that with me. It doesn't say the Great Suggestion, amen. It's the Great Commission. We don't want to make it the great omission. Amen. It's the great commission. And I love preaching about it because I'm so glad that someone preached the gospel to me. Are you feeling me tonight? The next one is find freedom. Jesus is real. Find freedom. That's our next one, the golden thread. Find Jesus is absolutely will. He will come into your heart and transform your life. I used to walk with a limp and carry a brew. <laughs> you know why? Because that was cool. I used to cuss. I had a crazy old vocabulary. Had a gun like Homer to the Harry. Hop in my car, lean to the side, turn my Kenwood up sky high. And after discotheques, you can bet I'd be on the floor cold working a sweat. I used to lie about the girls I had, fight all my brothers so I could be bad or have a name but I was bound to change because that junk is all in vain I went to church I didn't learn a thing I thought it was a good money scheme matter of fact I wasn't listening to the word bro I was checking out the girls you know I had a bible but they collected dust upon my shelf until I took it upon myself to check it out without a doubt now I read it so much the page is coming out I'm transformed man just like a go by this ain't no cartoon I'm not a robot I'm like a caterpillar who crawled in the cocoon and before your eyes came out a butterfly I'm transformed Jesus will transform your life he's real he will free you and transform you. When you're born again, your life will be a, a life of transformation and a life of freedom. Galatians 5.13, for you have been called to live in freedom. My brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to live a jacked up life. Let me read the Bible. To satisfy your sinful nature, Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Freedom with a purpose. Never, never, the next one, discover purpose. I don't care what class that you take. Now, fill me on this. 
Because it's not that I don't believe in these things. I do. They've helped me a lot. But just feel me. I don't care what class you take, personality test you take. It's your introversion, extroversion. If you're a commander, if you're a beaver, if you're a lion, if you're rating as a pastor or CEO, your primary purpose by God is to seek and save that which was lost. I don't care what your personality test is. I don't care what your number is. You're, you, you're called, Jay, I'm not evangelist. You don't have to be an evangelist, but you're called to do the work of an evangelist. You can make many excuses by a personality test. Well, they told me I'm this. I don't care what they told you. Well, Jay, I'm not evangelism. Yes, you are. You cannot be a Christian and not be an evangelist, period. If you're following, you're fishing. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. Sometimes, in many ways, will will fear will cloak itself in many ways. Well, jail. My my test says I'm this, and I, yep, yeah. I, I I'm just not called to do what you're called to do. You're called to do what God's called every one of us to do. And don't hide behind those things. We use these words. This word. These words was not created or I didn't hear them when I was being raised. I'm just being honest with you. And there's a radical middle on this, but feel me. Boundaries. Everybody knows boundaries, right? When I was young, I didn't even know those words, right? And now we've taken it from zero boundaries to boundaries. And it's gotta be, you gotta be careful with boundaries. You're like, jail, are you telling me to live? I'm not, no, use common sense. But sometimes boundaries can even keep the lost out. If you have so many walls that you're so bound up, you're not doing anything for Jesus because you've got boundaries. That's not Jesus. Jesus says this. If they want a cloak, give them two. If, you, if they want you to go a mile, go two with them. Jesus walked seven miles with two disciples right after he was raised from the dead. Listen to me. Boundaries are good, but don't get so excessive with it. Like, I, I just can't serve because you know what? That's not what they said in my personality test. And I can't do this. And first of all, if you don't serve, number one, and number two, if you're not an evangelist, you're not, you're not in the word of God. You, those two things. I don't serve the way you do, jail. If you don't serve, it's because you're full of pride. And full of pride, listen to me, pride is lethal. No, come on, pride is dangerous. Pride is what devil got kicked out of heaven for because pride says I'm better than God. Well, my personality test says I don't need to do this. I got a boundary. Don't listen to it. There's two things that we have to do. Serve and evangelism. Now, all the other tests, so be it. It will help you, help you learn in life, okay? It's helped me with our staff. But don't kick Jesus out of your life because of some test that you took. That's all for free tonight. Can we go on? Second Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. People are going to come to know Jesus Christ because you tell them. Wow. I'm telling you, you, tell the, you, you preach the gospel to people, they'll respond to it. I promise you, it works all the time. The next one is make a difference. That golden thread goes right through make a difference. The ultimate difference that you can make in a person's life is to share the, the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Jesus always left the 99. Here's the problem with the church. We love the 99. Oh, we get comfy with the 99. I kick it with the 99. My small group is a 95, 99. I got the 99, man. I got the culture of the 99. We talk about the seven spirits in the 99. We say hallelujah in the 99. Oh, I got my brothers and sisters in the 99. I got all the language down in the 99. I got the culture in the 99. I'm comfy around the 99. I like to do potlucks with the 99. We all about the 99. Jesus always leaves the 99 to go after the one. I like the 99 just as much as you do. I pastor 99. But Jesus always leaves the 99. 
Don't get stuck in the four walls because of culture. Don't get stuck in the four walls because you know the linger, the language. We, we get so stuck in the 99, we don't know how to talk to the one. We don't even know how to talk to the one anymore. Don't get that way. You got to have some cussing, drunken, crazy people in your life. Because that was me. And by the way, that's Jesus. Now, he's not drunk and cussy and crazy. He is one. Listen, I'm going to show you Jesus tonight of who he hung out with. That's a, that's a good end to going right into my Lostology chapter, chapter 15. Turn to chapter 15 of Luke. Never forget this chapter. It's called Lostology. How do you know, J.O.? Because I named it that. Someone else came up with the name Lostology and I called the dude and I was like, I love that name. I love your book. Can I steal everything out of it? He says, you do whatever you want to do with the Lostology. And thank you. I've been doing it for 25 years. Lostology. What is Lostology? Lostology is simple. It's the study of the lost and God's heart for the lost. And he's into both. Lost. When you think about lost, what do you think about? Ever lose your keys or your credit card or a child? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Scary. Terrifying. Terrifying, right? Why would I say those things about, I'm going to tell you tonight exactly Jesus' personality and, and even his, what people said about him. What was his reputation? Luke 15, 1, you there? Yep. It's going to be up there on the Sky Bible too. Listen to this. Then all the tax collectors and sinners, look, now this is what you can't do because you've read this before. Right now, because you've read it, you might kind of check me out and don't do it because the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us today. I promise you. Then all the tax collectors and all the sinners drew near to him to hear him drew near. I love that. The Holy Spirit draws the lost. He draws us. No one comes to the Father except the drawing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is, I mean, wow, you're talking about the Holy Spirit. There you go. And they were drawn to Jesus. Jesus was all about life. They loved being around him. They didn't, he didn't condemn them. He didn't kick them in the teeth. He didn't beat them when they were dead. Hey, he never, he never, he never put down someone who was already down. Now, would he kick someone in the teeth? You know, a, a rich lawyer, business type guy that thought he knew it all. Jesus would kick you right in your teeth. But it wasn't those, I mean, it, that wasn't typically what he did. He was all about reaching. He was drawn, they were drawn to him by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was, his, I call it the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of life. People love to be around him. Does people like being around you? If not, we need more Jesus inside of us. Because they were drawn to Jesus. Let's move on. Listen to what it says in Luke 15, 2. And the Pharisees, the church folk, right? And in and, and that day, the church folk, just being honest, the church folk complained. Let me back up. The Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. You're like, yeah, I didn't like what you're saying right there. A while ago, a while ago, you need to have some cussing, drinking buddies. Jesus did. Jesus ate with them. He received them. When you eat with someone in that culture, you actually forgive them. He received them. It wasn't like he received them in such a way like, I got to receive these crusty old addicts, stinking hypocrite, unclean, that wasn't his attitude of receiving them. He had a reputation of being a friend of sinners. He had a reputation of eating and hanging out with tax collectors and sinners. That was Jesus' reputation. Are you feeling me tonight? 
Receiving, if you look it up in the Greek, it's beautiful. That word, how did Jesus receive? It means hospitality. It means with credence. It means to await confidence, patience, to, ex listen, to accept them. He accepted them. He allowed them. He looked upon, he waited on, on them. He took them. He, he received one to self. That's what that received mean. This is no joke. The way that he treated those that was far from God. He received one and two companionship. That's what that receive means. Man, can you imagine if we related with people outside the church like Jesus did? We would have to have church out in the parking lot because everybody in the world would want to come to church. And I hope that this gets in our heart and, and in our minds. He eats with sinners. Jesus, listen to me tonight, Jesus loves with a reckless love a furious reckless love not not a not a harming reckless not like not like driving drunk dangerous reckless not like out god's not out of control he's not out of control reckless he's not like all over the place reckless but a reckless that says i don't care what you think about me i'm going to love them anyway i'm going to love them just like that i don't care what they say about me i'm going to love them i'm going to love them with a furious love i'm going to love them right where they are and it's going to change their life i don't care what the establishment says i'm going to love them with a reckless love that is somebody's baby that is someone's child that is god's child i am going to love them recklessly a reckless re relentless furious love loving people into eternal life instead of eternal destruction his love for us is undeserving is unwarranted it's unworthy most of us have a love with the hook we we love like this oh, i love you if we won't say that we won't say that but that, that's how we live we we love with the hook just like oh yeah i'll do the if he does it i'll, I'll treat him. i'll love him but jesus has no hook he loves them unadulterated, just completely pure, absolute, furious, unconditional. He eats with notorious sinners, and he's reckless in his love. Reckless, without thinking or caring about the consequences or of action. Reckless. He loves us with a reckless love. Jesus was not concerned about the theologians of the day. Jesus wasn't concerned about the, the Torah scholars. He wasn't concerned about what the church folks thought. He wasn't concerned about the scribes or the Pharisees. He loved with a relentless, reckless, furious love. He ate with tax collectors. His friends were sinners. He was a friend to sinners. He left the 99 for the one every time. I asked a guy in the gym the other day. It's, well, it's not just the other day. When you're my age, time really flies. <laughs> but I asked him to come to Easter. Easter gathering. And he looked at me. I, I've been slowly building a relationship with him. I have a list in my phone that says Jim. Jim, like G-Y-M, right? Jim, obviously. Yeah, thank you, Dakota. And then it has a list of people in there that I've met and their names. And it might say Ricky from Sandpoint, so I can remember, right? And uh, this, I won't tell you his name in case he ever comes and so forth and so on. But I, I invited him to Easter and he looks at me. He goes, hey, I got a different philosophy and I said, okay, I, I have no clue what that philosophy is, but I'm like, hey, do you want to catch a, a cup of coffee sometime? I would love to hear your philosophy because I know what my philosophy is. Right. 
my philosophy is Bible, Jesus, born again, Holy Spirit, fire. You name it, that's my philosophy. The philosophy that changes lives for eternity. And so I, out of all due respect, I'm like, yeah. And I, I, I called him, I texted him, and he, 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 he uh, what did he do when I texted him? I think he like called me or something. It was, it was just the other day. And so I said, hey, do you want to have a cup of coffee? He says, yeah. So we met at the gym at 3.30 for a cup of coffee. And he immediately sat down. It started unfolding really quickly. I said, hey, man, what's your last name? I didn't even know his last name. He goes, my Hebrew name. And I went, oh, <laughs> all right. I'm feeling the philosophy. The brother's a Jewish brother, and I'm excited. I'm like, man, this is where we got our oracles from. I highly respect this dude right here. And we, we are on different pages, right? But I totally started feeling his philosophy. And, uh, you know, he made straight up. He, he told me that the Messiah hadn't come. And I said, well, you know, that's not what I believe. And, and I just told him a little bit about being born again. And I'm creating a relationship with him, right? I'm creating a relationship. I mean, he, 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 he cusses pretty much like a sailor. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, I'm not saying all Jews do that. I'm just talking about this one individual. Okay, so don't be, don't be putting that out on all uh, my Jewish brother. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying this brother did. It's a fact. I was like, dang, man. Brother, cussing up a storm, right? But I'm like, this is not going to bother me. I want to I be friends with this guy. And then so we, he, we went lifted weights, and I ran into him again. And man, he was so much warmer to me this time. And, and I hope to sit down. I've already talked to him. I said, hey, I want to meet again sometime, have coffee. You into that? Absolutely. Why do you say that, J.O.? Because... I know that Jesus wants to save this dude. I read that one scripture that none should perish. Would you say that out loud with me? None should perish. If you got some kind of crazy old theology that all of a sudden, you know, this half of the room's gonna snap, crackle, and pop in hell, and this side of the room's gonna go to heaven. Come on, somebody. The Father, Jesus, sent his, God sent his son for the entire world. He wants to save all. Ray Dean will blow you away. Like my group of unsaved friends looks way different than Ray Dean's unsaved friends. But they're all radical. I mean, she'll take people to Christian, like, believing gatherings that are totally radical. They usually dress really good and fixed all up and, you know, just cheat up from the feet up. You know what I'm saying? Just a But she has a radical evangelism touch on her life that I'm like, I could never, hunt Seth, hunt Topher. It's straight up. It's like, wow. Why do you say that, J.O.? Well, I want to live a way in such a way that hopefully is an example for you, but more so just because this is how Jesus wants us to live, and I want to even get better at it. So I got a question for you tonight. Who are you hanging out with? Who are you hanging out with? It's not to beat you up. I love hanging out with the 99. I'm way comfortable with the 99. I'm comfortable with you guys. I'm comfortable with the 99. I know your lingo. I know your songs. I know when you say, hey, man, what you think about the seven spirits? I don't freak out on you like you're talking about seven demons. I know you're talking about the seven spirits in Revelation. I get that. The seven angels. I got all that. So I don't freak out on your lingo. But I don't want to be so much inside that I can't relate to those on the outside. Drew's really good at that, man. That brother right there, he'd be reaching people all over the planet because he's like, hey, man. A lot of us who came out of hell, we want to take and snatch people out of hell. Let's read on Luke 15, three through seven. He spoke with the parable saying, what man of you, I hope you have your Bible because I'm not letting you cheat on this one. It's not going to beat up there, right? What if a man having a hundred sheep, if he loses one, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? Amen. Well, you would do that, right? 
If you had 99, if you had 100 kids, would you go after the one? Absolutely you would. And when he's found it, he lays it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together friends and neighbors saying, let's throw a party. Party. Rejoice. Some, I say party and you frown at me. How you do that, Christians? Come on, somebody. Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you, likewise, there is more joy in heaven over the one sinner than all of us all up in church right now. Then, then one sinner who rins, repents, the 99 just person who needs no repentance. He always leaves the 99. Jesus met a woman at a well. The one. Absolutely reckless. Alone with a Samaritan woman. I don't know about all you other dudes. But I ain't meeting with some strange woman at a well of another foreigner lady that I don't even know at a well. I'm telling you, that's some kind of reckless to me. But he's God and he's perfect. He can do whatever he wants to do because he's not going to make a mistake. He has a reckless love with the unlovable. What kind of woman was this? She ain't no church going lady. She's been married five times. Samaritan. Not married now. Stranger danger. Five husbands. They talk about water. They talk about, well, I love Jesus. Man, he knows how to get a conversation rolling. Give me a drink, yo. That's what he says. You don't know how to get a conversation going? It's easy. I'm going to help you with that today. Jesus says, give me a drink. He talks about water, well, living water, eternal life. He talks about worship. He talks about true worship. He talks about uh, relationships. Oh, you had five husbands. He gets all prophetic. You don't believe in word of knowledge? Jesus throws a word of knowledge down now. Oh, you've been married five times and now you're, not, you're just you know, kind of shacking up maybe. That's my terminology. He's with another person, right? The disciples are gone. He's having this relationship. He's building a relationship with this woman. Disciples come back because they went to get something to eat. I love Jesus' response. There's a lot going on in the story. I don't have time. You should just read it, John 4. It's a great story. But he says, but he said to them, because they said, hey, Jesus, we brought you some food back. Jesus says, I have food to eat, which you do not know. That food that he talks about right there is, if you look it up in the Greek, it's food for the soul. See, when you're sharing, when you're doing the will of the Father, when you're sharing the gospel, when you're touching the lost, I'm going to tell you, it is food for your soul. When you're doing the work of the man, you would think that it would be the opposite. You would think that if Doug's casting out demons, that poor guy, he's going to be beat up from the feet up, right? He's going to be, but no, 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 that guy will be filled. He'll be a lethal weapon because he's being poured out. But as he's being poured out, God is pouring in. It's, it's food for the soul. Soul food. And Jesus is eating on that soul food. It's, it's unbelievable. And then look at what happens with this encounter. What takes place? There's a lot in between this, this, this story that you should read. But all of a sudden, this is what's said. This is the fruit of that encounter. It says this in John 4, 39. And many, say that with me, many. Many, many of the Samaritans, the outside folk, the lost, the 90, not the 90, the, the one. The, many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman, pretty powerful, who testify, he told me all that I ever did. Now, I guarantee you that she didn't, he didn't tell her everything. But think about the, the worst place in your life. 
Think about the hurting, craziest trauma strategy in your life. When Jesus touches that part of your heart, you'll walk away going, Jesus told him everything about my life. And with her, it was relationships. I mean, hey, if you've been married five times, I'm not here to beat you up. I'm not saying that at all. My, my deal is that that was a painful spot for her. Jesus loved her with a crazy, reckless love. That reckless love produced revival among the Samaritans. One encounter with Jesus, a Samaritan lady, and revival is busted loose. Then all of a sudden, Mark 5, let's back up to Mark 4. He's with the 99. He's with the multitude. He has people all over him in Mark 4, everywhere. And he tells the disciples, get in the boat. He gets in a boat, in a storm, crosses a sea, and meets the craziest demon-possessed dude on the face of the earth, but naked, chains, crazy, demonic, got a legion of demons, what's a legion? 5,000 to 6,000 demons. Jesus begins to minister to this dude, casts demons out of him, throws them to, to, to pigs, he may have not been fully butt naked. I don't know if it's butt or buck. Is it butt or buck? I know it's something because listen. No, 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 feel me, feel me, feel me. This dude is jacked up. Scary. I've seen people like that in Seattle. No, that's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. That's not a joke. I've seen, I've seen a street preacher, I've seen a street preacher preaching in Seattle and a lady just, just shredding her arms with glass, dripping blood everywhere. I've seen it. That's not a demon, you tell me what it is. All of a sudden, he casts the demons out. This dude was howling at night, living in the tombs. They couldn't keep chains on him, shackles on him because he's demonically strong. And he's obviously doesn't have all his clothes on because let me tell you what happens to him after he gets delivered. The Bible says he's fully clothed in his right mind. And people are scared. Yeah. <laughs> They're scared spitless. They're like, dude, have you seen crazy demon shackled, howling, hairy lately? <laughs> and look what he wants to do. Let me just read this to you. He leaves the 99... But hey, really, honestly, it was probably hundreds or thousands of people. Just read it. You don't believe me? Go to Mark 4. What does he do across the sea? He touches one life. That's it. Demon crazy guy. That's it. One. Listen to what takes place. Mark 5, 18 through 20. As Jesus was, the change that happens inside of a person when they really meet Jesus. <laughs> when Jesus was getting in the boat, the man who had been demon possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, no, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the 10 towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus has done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. I mean, this guy, is a, he didn't go to evangelism class. He didn't take my lostology class. He ain't even read the Bible. He goes from being demon-possessed to preaching the gospel. He always leaves the 99 and a reckless revival breaks loose. Reckless love 
equals a reckless revival. Let me talk about my last dude, and then we're going to be about done. I like this guy. His name's Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus in Luke 19, 5 and 7. It says, when Jesus came by, he looked up Zacchaeus and called ooh, him by name. He calls us by name. He'll call you out because he loves you. Zacchaeus, he said, come down, come, come down and I must, look, look, what, what, what? No, Jesus just didn't say this. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus is crazy, man. That guy's a rich chief tax collector. He can't spell a friend. He doesn't have a, he's never had a friend. You ain't a tax collector, rich tax collector. You don't got friends. You're not even a sinner. You're, you're in a whole different level on your own. And Jesus says, come down. I must have, I must uh, 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 be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus, look, look at what a reckless love does. Just listen to this real good. Zacchaeus quickly comes down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. The 99. Don't be the 99. He's gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner. And they grumbled. Wow. Thank you, Jesus, for your reckless love. Because I was a notorious sinner. Some of you, I, I know some of your stories. You were right in the same notorious sinner classroom with me. All of these are dangerous, reckless outcasts. Full of rumors, full of gossip. She had five husbands, maybe shacking up with the dude. He had a legion of demons. Everybody knew about him in the whole region, 5,000, 6,000 demons. Zacchaeus, rich tax collector, cut, you know, selfish, heartless. Let me close with this. Why do people get lost? Always remember this. They may be lost because they're abused or rejected or some trauma they've been through or divorce or they're unloved or they're unwanted. They've lost their identity. The enemy, outcast. They could be rich and lost. It could be parenting and they're lost. All reckless reasons, but always remember this. Always remember this. You walk away and remember this. The number one reason that people get lost is because it is easy. Say that with me, easy. When you look at somebody's life and you go, wow, how do they get so jacked up? Because it's easy. If you're walking around, if you didn't have your phone and you're driving and walking through the woods, believe me, you're in a, in a, a city you've never been in. You're in a building you've never been in. You don't have an Apple phone telling you what to do. It's easy to get lost. It's easy to get spiritually lost. Matter of fact, when you're born, you're lost. And if you don't do anything in your life, you'll stay lost your entire life until you come to know Jesus Christ. You get lost, you get loster, and then you get lost this. Let me close with this, conversations. Just want to throw this nugget out. So many Christians don't know how to get the conversation going with the one because they are always with the 99. Always with the 99. How do you get the conversation going? Well, just like Jesus got it going, he said, give me a drink. I like Black Eyed Peas, some of their songs. They've got one. Let's get it started. Ah, let's get it started. Yeah, let's get it started. Ha, ah, right? You need to know how to, let's get it started. Stupid, you know, come on. You need to know, I didn't call you stupid. It says it in the song. It says it in the song. What's your point, J.O.? You need to know how to get it started. Don't be a Christian that all you know is Christianese. 
I don't care that you know Genesis, Ex, Leviticus, Numbers, Jew, Arms, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Kuru, First, Second, 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 Matthew, Mark, Luke. I don't care. You, hallelujah. Can you get a conversation going with someone that doesn't know Jesus? Jesus goes, give me a drink. Oh, let's talk about water because we're at a well. Let's talk about living water. Oh, drink this water. You'll never thirst again. Oh, the harvest is ripe for reaping. He used normal. How many of you get st stressed out about talking about football or riding a Harley or cutting wood? Or what's your thing? What's your thing? What do you like to do? What's your thing? What's your thing? Huh? Clothes. Does it stress you out to talk about clothes? No, you're like, oh, I like the blue jeans and I like those kind. I don't, I don't like the whole, I like that. I, no, you're, you're cool with talking about clothes. That's the way Jesus wants us to talk spiritually. We've made it so hard. We talk about Jesus, we get sweaty and little, gosh, they're going to reject me. No, maybe they just, just talk. You made the step really up here whenever you're just like, hey, you want to have coffee? Learn to get the conversation started. The best way that you can learn to get the conversation started is by doing. I was with my friends the other day, and we were with a new couple that I'd met one other time. And I said, how did you? They told us how they met. Well, we were at a restaurant, <laughs> and it's Jeffrey and Linda Sirota. <laughs> And Jeffrey goes over to their table and says, hey, can I have your butter? I was like, oh, I love this dude. He either asked for their butter or their bread. That's awesome. And guess what? Now they are best friends. They've traveled together. They've skied together. We did Passover with them last Friday night. And it all began with can I have your butter? Most people are scared spitless about that. Just get the conversation rolling. Okay. I think you caught the spirit of lostology tonight. Amen. Well, there may be someone lost in here tonight. You don't know Christ or you've walked away from them. You could be that that one. You could be the lost coin. Very valued. The woman sweeps the house to finds it. You could be the prodigal. The father loses a son, but he waits and he waits and looks for him and runs out, throws a party for him. He says, my son was lost, but now he's found. He was dead and now he's alive. Maybe you're lost tonight. This is what's so amazing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Feel me, look at me really good right now. What have you done so bad? I don't care, this is radical, but the gospel is radical. I don't care what you've done. Jesus forgives and saves. Well, J.O., I, I need to go to court. Well, you might need to go to court. But in court, this is what typically takes place. If you're guilty, you're going to pay a fine or maybe go to jail. Spend time. Jesus did both of those for you. He paid your fine. He did your time. Not saying that you won't have to do that. Here's my point is that I don't care what you've done. Jesus died for it so that you could have eternal life with him beginning tonight. He paid the ultimate price so that you could have a relationship with the father so that you could have eternal life. It's called the gospel of grace, receiving something that you don't deserve because you don't but because of what Jesus did he wants to come he loves you with a furious love with a reckless love and he wants you to begin a relationship with him this moment tonight 
you don't know Jesus, I want you to pray with me right now. Jesus did all the heavy lifting. He wants you to believe and to receive. And if you do that tonight, the Bible says if you declare him as Lord of your life, you will be saved. You won't end up in, there is seriously an eternal damnation that without Christ is exactly where you'll end. But you don't have to go there. He desires none should perish. But you have to do it Jesus' way. He wants to come and live inside of you. He wants to be the Lord of your life.